Okay, I've got the cam followers in, all greased up. One of the things you want to do when you put together a D343 or a 1693 is buy lots of high temperature red silicone on your fuel nozzle inserts through the cam fence. There's an o-ring, just a cat yellow o-ring that goes in there. What you want to do is put uh, red silicone, a big bead of it around that so when you push it in it uh, rolls up around protective layer because one bad thing about these is the exhaust sits up here really close and they didn't build any kind of heat shield and it'll cook that o-ring in there especially on uh, let's see number three or four and five cylinders the turbo's right there and it'll just burn them up. And the other thing is you're going to want to use lots of red silicone on the gasket underneath this. And then there's a gasket in here where your cam drive comes through. And you just want to cover that in silicone when you put it together. Otherwise you'll get leaks out of here and it'll come pouring out the back of the head. Plus if you've had your block decked or your head milled there's four 3 8 bolts that go in here in the back of the fence that hold this <clears throat> to the accessory drive you want to take a file or a rotary file and go in there and egg shape these holes take some out on the top side because it's going to go down farther and if you don't clearance for the bolts put it in test fit it first Put a gasket under it and the bolts in there and if you don't have some clearance underneath the top of these holes you're going to want to put a little clearance in there so that uh, the bolts don't hold the back of the cam fence up or it'll leak and it will leak like a sieve if you don't. Most D343s are a stinking oily mess because right back in here they won't get this gasket sealed up good and you've got to really put some silicone in there and they'll also leak on the pan we silicone the both the plate and the pan before we put it on you can see the silicone coming out of there we torque it down just lightly till the silicone comes out and then you want to let it sit for a while before you put the final torque on it otherwise you risk squeezing the gasket out and uh, tearing it and if you do all that stuff these things will stay good and clean uh, the last two that we did we really don't have any leaks at all anywhere uh, this cam fence and valve cover design cat did was pretty crappy and so you really gotta have these surfaces clean we take ether and a paper towel to them or we also refer to it as uh, cleaning fluid and clean those surfaces up really good and then silicone them this is my awesome one thousand dollar cap manifold uh, I measured the flanges this one out here on the corner measures uh, 756 and then 720 740 690, 660, 660, and it just goes down and down and down until you get down here, and on this end it's 590. So you got almost 200 thousandths difference in the flange thickness, and on this end, as you saw, I only can get about half the threads of the nut on that stud. I hope it holds. But this is the kind of garbage quality control cat has now. Here's another example of uh, cat quality. Uh, this is a brand new $1,300 pulley and hub. And there's a half inch hole here and a half inch hole here. And you've got to have those puller holes to pull this off the crank because this pulley also has the hub on the other end that goes on the tapered end of the crankshaft so once you tighten these two bolts with this plate on in there it 
press fits it on that taper on the crank and you've got to put a pretty good size ram in there to pull that off anyway when we bought this these holes were not drilled and tapped through here they were on the back side which does you absolutely no good uh, if those holes aren't on the front you can't pull it off so we had to take it to a machine shop and have them finish drilling those out and tap them and then try to rebalance that um, okay I've put this thing on and I put some retort cement in the slip joints I hope that seals it up this is the one I'm really worried about here so it's in there pretty thick I hope that'll stay long enough for it to fill full of junk anyway this is your turbo opening uh, 343 just has one big rectangular opening uh, 1693 will have a split housing in here so that cylinders 1 through 3 come out this side and 4, 5, 6 come out this side and some of the 1693 applications had a turbo with the split housing they're a little more efficient than these this is the uh, exhaust gas bypass uh, there's a big valve in the elbow the bolts on here uh, I usually deactivate that so it can't work that's the turbo bypass valve I usually take the line that goes in here and it goes around to the boost side and senses boost I go in here and undo it and I turn the springs around so that it pushes on the valve and the valve is just like a exhaust or intake valve only the face the angle on it is on the front side so it's going to seal in here and this is the passage that would allow the gas to escape go around the valve and on through the elbow okay this is how you silicone a 343 together I'm going to put tons of it on this uh, cam drive gasket and then a bead all the way around the top gasket Okay, the fence is on, got the bolts in, you can see the bead of silicone that rolled up here and then inside, got a pretty good bead. And you put bolts in here to hold it down and put the rest of the bolts in some of these holes just to hold the gasket. You can see the silicone that squeezed out there. You'll notice that the paint is burned back here, and that was because this inside corner in here was broke. And what happens is when you put this on, you've got to be careful. You just snug these up until silicone starts to squeeze, and then start tightening these bolts on here to, to push the whole cam fence down. If you don't, you're going to bind it. And I've seen them broken corners and in the bolt holes and so you got to go down get this back end in and then start to go down and then usually what I do is after I've got these tightened down cam fence I'll loosen these one more time to make sure that I've compressed the gasket and the silicone I'm down as far as I go and then I'll final torque these and these just have a lock washer and a hard flat Okay, there the lid is on, everything's glued on, we use that red silicone, guaranteed not to leak. One thing you want to do on a 343 in a scraper is if it has the retarder cooler up here above the cam cover, valve cover, you have got to put a stud in this hole and a nut on it. If you don't, you will never get this cover off. You will have to bend the bolt to get the cover off. Either that or undo the retarder cooler. So I just put a stud in it. End of problem. And then back here on the... I don't know why Cat did this, but <clears throat> there's two holes here. And they're slotted clear into the bolt. So if you don't put silicone in there and seal that off, 
the dirt and everything from outside goes inside there down the hole and inside of here and when you go to take this bolt out you will have dirt everywhere inside the engine so I just put a little silicone on it and that keeps the gunk from going out one of the other advantages to using silicone on these besides they don't leak is those gaskets will come off without tearing you won't be in there scraping trying to get them off uh, both this top cover and the fence are made out of aluminum so they're kind of delicate so you take a sharp gasket scraper after them and I guarantee you they'll leak and that's one of the reasons you have to use silicone on these is after 30 plus years those surfaces have been ground on, scraped on, dinged up to the point where uh, a dry gasket will never seal them. You've got to use some silicone. Okay, this is your cam drive shaft. Uh, you put a 3 8 bolt on it and you can pull it out. And you can see that right here on top there's a space. There's no tooth on it and the same on the other end so what you do is you turn your motor over get it on top dead center um, that's with this up facing up and then on your cams once you get your cams in you rotate them till that's up you want to make sure you're pretty close to top center orientation on your cam so that when you bolt them down you're gonna have a few valves that it's going to be trying to open and uh, you could hit the piston bend the valve or break the cam bearing blocks on it when you go to bolt it down so once you get it in your cams in there and bolt it down you can just slip your drive shaft right in and then you put this lifting hook on the back which is the cover for it and that holds your drive shaft in well everything's put together Turbos on, fan drive belts, pulleys. Only thing I have left is a dipstick tube to put in. This is the retarder. Uses uh, transmission oil to slow the machine down. Oil comes in here from the transmission through this valve inside the housing around front to the cooler and back to the transmission everything's put together on this side this is the transmission cooler this is the intake pipe the air comes uh, in through this elbow from the filter through the turbo pressurized air goes through that outlet into the after cooler and behind the radiator down through the after cooler and then this is the intake pipe at the bottom where it comes out of the after cooler and around into the engine I'll show you what the after cooler looks like okay this is the after cooler and it sits uh, behind the radiator this is the inlet where the air would go in this is a test plate we put on here to pressurize the cooler and test it and then the outlet is clear down here and it bolts to the radiator right here it bolts to the top of the radiator header you can see it's about two and a half inches wide it's about four foot by four foot well, the next time you see any video from this engine, it should be in the scraper. And we should be seeing if it's going to run or not. See if we did a good job rebuilding it. This is the third D343 I've done in the last two years. Uh, I hope I never do another one. Unfortunately, I've got a 988 loader that's got a sick engine in it. And uh, we're going to have to do something with it. Um, so thanks for watching the videos uh, Everything you ever wanted to know about a d343, but we're afraid to ask 
I uh, hope this explains to you what this motor is and how it works and how it's put together.